All right, what is up everyone? My name is Chris and today this is a little bit different than uh, my other videos. Um, I'm going to be doing a career sim uh, on NHL 20 of Joel Farabee. Uh, and this is part one, um, which is just this season, his rookie year, 2019-20. Um, and th the whole season was just crazy. It, 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 I had a great time uh, doing it and doing all the sims and doing the voiceover and things like that. It, I had fun. I enjoyed it. Um, I tried doing this with Morgan Frost, um, and for some reason, I had, like, turned off everything, and I forgot to turn off injuries. So, he ended up getting injured, and then he got sent back down to the Canadian Hockey League, so it was just a whole mess. Um, and I'm actually thinking of doing this with some more um, Flyers players, kind of more on, like, the rookie side. I'm, I'm definitely going to see how this one works out first, and then I'll go through it. But this is part one, um, and then later on, I'll have part two and maybe, like, a week or so. It's going to be a while. Um, because I have to go every season uh, until he retires. So that's going to be a while. Um, I don't know how long the video will be. That's why I'm kind of just doing a part one in this. Because I added a lot of like game highlights and uh, going through the how the team did as well. Because it's this season. So again, um, and, and please let me know what you think in the comments below about this. Um, I'm always trying to get some more ideas. And, 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 and any uh, constructive criticism or anything along those lines, I'll, I'll take per, I'll, will not take personally. And I'll look at that. Um, and I'll try to make it as best as possible. But I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And uh, as always, podcast articles, those links are on my channel. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you guys in the next one, and goodbye. All right, so basically right here you got Farabee uh, on the third line with Patrick uh, and JVR. And then I kind of just uh, – so I'm doing a post-commentary right now, so I'm basically just, like, looking through the whole lines. Um, and uh, I, I, I try to do it basically as much – as you know what the actual flyers lines were uh, and then like moving on to the defense um you got you know i, I basically just try to do and everything off of the top of my head that i could think of with the lines. so uh that's basically it and let's see how the season one goes is it me or like did this happen in real life <laughs> like so the flyers finish in second um drew leads the team in points with 72 47 25 and 10 it's pretty relatable record uh to what the flyers had today um and they get depth scoring from a lot of guys um as for Farabee in his first season basically his first full season on the third line eight goals 23 assists 31 points a plus 18 um that's that's pretty damn good for being a third line player um his faceoff percentage was surprisingly well he uh he went 30 for 67 on the faceoffs um and he uh, around 11 and a half uh, minutes of ice time um, per game. So that's pretty good. 11 blocks as well, 97 hits. Um, he played, he had two less hits than Matt Neskinen, which is pretty crazy. Um, but, you know, it wasn't just Farabee, man. The whole team played good. And that was the thing. Like, I kind of just wanted to do this, like, like this, like with the season review uh, of how the team did as well, like throughout just the 1920 season because it's the season that happened right now. And the other ones are kind of just be more of like focusing on Farabee, but. You saw all the numbers there. As for the goaltenders, Carter Hart, 900 save percentage, 296. He had some pretty low numbers, which I was surprised at. Um, but Elliott, he was unreal. And that was really in real life. His record was very good, uh, 924, 222. Um, the Moose and Hart, uh, they both have two shutouts each. And the Flyers, they finished in second place. Um, and as I said, 47, 25, and 10. Pretty damn good record. They were in first for a long time. As I watched the Sim, they were playing better and better. And then Pittsburgh just started to keep winning and winning. And then they pl ended up playing the Flyers at one point. It was the end of March, and they smoked us like 8-3 or something like that. And Pittsburgh just ran away with it. They ended up winning the President's Trophy, um, and they played pretty damn good. Um, but even still, I mean, they were just... Man, I mean, they were unreal. Um, so... God, so the Flyers finish in fourth in the league. Uh, Edmonton finishes in third. San Jose finishes in fifth. The Blues, Hurricanes, and Predators. Um, so the Flyers are actually going to play the Hurricanes uh, in the first round uh, with home ice advantage. Um, and this whole start of this round was absolutely crazy um, because we were down 3 nothing. We were down 3 nothing 
um, to the third place team as being like one of the top five teams in the league. And I was, I guess you could say I was uh, screwed uh, sitting there uh, watching the sim. I was, and I kind of, this is why I kind of like went game by game because I was just like, it's weird with you do that with the sim because if you go game by game, you actually win the games. I don't know why it's like that. Um, but this is game seven right here. Uh, we ended up winning game six in overtime, but this is game seven. It was so nerve breaking, uh, nerve wracking, everything. I mean, it was one, one, um, for the longest time. And then Giroux gets one with like a minute left. Um, and that's it. The Flyers went two to one and they get the reverse sweep on the Penguin on uh, Carolina. Then they play the Penguins and they are tied two to two after four games. Um, and a lot of these games were around three goals. Um, game one was kind of a blowout, but then the Flyers win game five, lose game six at home, um, and then they dominate the Penguins in game seven on the road, five to one, uh, and they pick up the uh, the series win, and then they go on to the conference finals, and they would play the Florida Panthers, um, and they beat the Panthers in six. So after this, I noticed that uh, after every series so far, the Flyers lost the first game and ended up coming back and winning the series. Um majority of the time it was tied two to two uh, in two of the rounds it was tied uh either two to two or one to one going into the next couple games but uh they lose the first one here in the cup final versus san jose um they win game two um and they, after that i mean they kind of just went on a roll um and then they win the next two games uh they lose they ended up losing game uh game five and then here's game six in san jose flyers are playing good they're up two one after the first period 4-1 after the second period, um, and the Sharks kind of came back a little bit. Flyers got some depth scoring, um, and they, they really just continued from there. Um, and, you know, Meyer gets one. Uh, Tyler Pedelec would add one here for the Flyers. Uh, then Eric Carlson would get one for San Jose. Then Michael Raffel. Um, and then it just continued and continued. Um, and the Flyers, they ended up playing really good. Um, and you know, it, it was crazy because this was such a reminder to me, like w of what the, this team brought this season and how good they played. Um, and you know, the Flyers would end up winning the cup in this, uh, they win in six, um, they win game six, seven to four. Um, and it was crazy because they had some pretty good guys playing the playoffs. Um, Jarrett wins the con Smythe with 18 points. Um, and the Flyers played pretty damn good. Um, it, it was crazy because it was such a such a relatable season. I, I honestly couldn't believe that they ended actually won here. Um, but you know, uh, God, because I did this before on stream too. Um, and if you, I haven't done a stream in a long time, and I think I'm going to soon. I just haven't really had the time to sit down and play for a couple hours. Because that's really what I like doing. I kind of just like looking through it. And I like getting stuff done. I don't like doing like a little bit. Because the point of the stream is supposed to be like an hour or so. So, um, you know, I did this before. And I couldn't really figure out a way to record my my Xbox. And then I figured out that you could do the thing for like the under 10 minutes. So I would just kind of like go through all these clips and like record them. And then download them to my phone because I have the Xbox app. And I would kind of edit it all together. And that's why I'm doing this voiceover right now. Um, but you see the hate the uh, the handshake line here, um, and it's funny because Voracek looks actually pretty realistic in this game. I don't know why, but he does. Not many of the other guys do like that. That that does not look like Provorov at all. But um, you know, as I said, Drew wins the Con Smythe with the C with the C on his chest. Damn right. Um, and as I said, eighteen points, four goals, uh, uh, fourteen assists, and that does not look like Harry Batman whatsoever. Um, but. <laughs> and it's funny because as I'm thinking, uh, you know, as the cup comes out here, I'm thinking to myself, who would it go to? Who I obviously, you know, you know, like this game has the animation where where the goalie gets it, so Carter Hart's gonna get it. And there's Dustin Braun winning it in his his old town where he played for th like 12, 13 years, unreal. Um, and I, I I never understood this with the with the crowd though. Like no, every, every crowd, whether it's home or away, is standing and you got fans cheering. I never understood that they're just sitting down. Um, but Drew lifts up the cup in the same animation that's been in this game for the past, like, three years. Um, and, and this is just a beautiful sight, man. I, ugh, God, I wish this was real life. I really do. But the point of this video, um, looking at Farabee, and the next person who gets it blew my mind that he got it. I couldn't believe that Scott Lawton would give the cup to... Uh, it, Joel Farabee.
<laughs> he gives it to Farabee. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my god. I could not believe that Farabee actually lifted the cup in the celebration. I was thinking maybe like Voracek or like Matt Niskanen or even Provorov. But they give it to Farabee. That's awesome. I couldn't believe it. I, it, it. It was like the game knew I was doing the same on Farabee. Um, and he would end up giving it to Carter Hart. But even still, um, I, I still can't believe it right now as I'm talking about it because I just did not understand how the game gave it to Faraby when he was a rookie and everything along those lines. I was thinking it was going to be like a veteran or something like that. Um, but Katahat gets it here, um, that, and that's my terrible Boston accent. But, um, God, it, it's such a good season. And then you get the picture and everything. It, it was just a great Great time doing this, um, and again, I'll probably be probably be doing more of these. Um, I tried to do it with Morgan Frost, and the Flyers, for some reason, sent him back down to the Canadian Hockey League, which I never understood, but these were the playoff points, um, and, you know, Drew, he gets 30 points in the playoffs, uh, which is crazy because it said on the thing that he had 18, and I go in here, and that he it said he had uh, 30, which made absolutely no sense. Um, Carter Hart, pretty damn good in the playoffs. Elliott, not so much. Um, 919, 250 for Hart. Um, but as for Farabee, he didn't really play that great in the playoffs, but this is all that matters. And I hope you guys enjoy this one. I'll have some more of these coming and goodbye.